Hello lovelies and welcome to another video with me. Today I'm going to talk about 10 TV shows that are set in the past and perfect for vintage lovers. So, as I said, I picked out 10 shows that I've either already watched or that I'm currently watching because obviously I want to know what I'm talking about. But if you have something that I'm not talking about today and you really want to recommend to everyone, then feel free to comment down below. Because let's be honest, there are more than 10 great TV shows out there. But I would say without further ado, I am going to start now. Starting with Outlander. This show is set in actually two different times, decades, eras. One of them is the 1940s and the following years and the other time period is the 18th century and you may wondering why is it set in two different times? Because the main character is time traveling. So there is the main character Claire who was a nurse in the World War II and after the war she finally gets to spend some time with her husband and they travel to Scotland and basically there are some standing stones at the Gragna Dune. I hope I said that right. <laughs> one morning she touches one of those stones and then she time travels back into the 18th century over there she doesn't really know what happened and she meets a group of Scottish Highlanders but I don't want to tell you too much because you should watch it yourself. The age limit for this show is actually 16 and I'm mentioning this because I think it is important to say this show is showing well how should I explain it very passionate love scenes between two of the main characters if you know what I mean. <laughs> Also, a little spoiler, but I think it is important to mention, is that there are a few rape scenes. I want to mention this because I know for a lot of people this can be very triggering and not everyone likes to watch these kind of things. So if this is nothing for you and you don't want to skip scenes, then maybe the show isn't for you. But obviously this is not everything the show is about. It also has some very lovely scenes and obviously it also shows the life back in the 18th century which was very different to nowadays so it is very interesting and I think it is very well made. The cinematography is beautiful as well. I love the whole mood that is going on in there and the whole aesthetic. So far there are four seasons and the first few episodes of the fifth season are just coming out now and you can watch it on Netflix. Victoria. So this show, as the name already says, is about Queen Victoria and is therefore set in the 19th century during the Victorian era in Great Britain and it focuses on her early life from her coronation to her marriage with Prince Albert to getting her first children and basically everything else that is happening in this chapter of her reign, played by the wonderful Jenna Coleman, who maybe some of you know from the show Doctor Who, and she really does a great job. The rest of the cast is amazing as well, with actors like Tom Muse, who's playing Prince Albert, Rufus Sewell, who's playing Lord Melbourne, and a few other ones. And this is definitely a great show to watch for everyone who's interested into the royal history, British history. Costumes and the setting are amazing. They really make you travel back in time and everything looks absolutely glorious and royal and just absolutely real. Especially the dresses that Victoria is wearing. <laughs> They're definitely a treat for the eye. I think all in all is a very well-made show. There obviously are a few kind of more fictional things, but I guess it's totally normal for these kind of TV shows. But yeah, so far it has three seasons. I think there's also a Christmas special. You can watch it on Amazon Prime. Grand Hotel. I hope I said that right. This TV show is set in the early 20th century, around 1906, 1907 in Spain. So it is a Spanish production, which is pretty nice in between all of those American and British TV shows. And I feel like this show is a little bit lesser known, probably because it is a Spanish production, but that is why I definitely wanted to include it, because it is amazing. So it is about the family Alacon, and 
they own the Grand Hotel, which is a fictional hotel. It is based on a real hotel, but all of the things that are going on in there are fictional. There is the main character called Julio, and he comes to the Grand Hotel because he wants to visit his sister, but he then realized that she disappeared and he tries to find out what happened to her. So that's why he decides to work in the hotel and he later on then becomes friends with the daughter of the family called Alicia and she helps him and it really gets dark at some point. So if you're interested into a mix of romance and murder and drama and intrigues then this is definitely a great show also the fashion this show really made me fell in love with the edwardian fashion because it is just absolutely lovely so if you need some inspiration for this kind of fashion then it's also a great show to watch by the way i'm probably going to swoon a lot over fashion and hairstyles because obviously that's what i'm interested in i mean I just have to, you know. <laughs> there are three seasons in total and you can watch it on Netflix. Downton Abbey. This is one of my absolute favorite TV shows and I highly recommend you to watch it if you haven't already. So this show, just as Grand Hotel, is set in the early 20th century, but in Great Britain it starts in the 1910s goes over into the 1920s. It is basically about the aristocratic family called Crawley who lives at Downton Abbey and it shows you their life as well as the lives of their servants and how they interact with each other, the relationships between them. Everything is set in between all of those big events that happened back then. It starts with the sinking of the Titanic, goes over to the First World War, Spanish influenza and loads and loads and loads of other things. So you have this fictional family and the real events and you kind of get an insight into how the people handled the situation and how they lived with it. So it is educating in a way and the characters are strong and very interesting. My personal favorite is the role played by Dame Maggie Smith. She is hilarious. Lady Violet, Michelle Dockery, who plays Lady Mary. A lot of people, by the way, say that I kind of look like her. I don't know. <laughs> and loads and loads of others. The cast is just absolutely strong. Fashion-wise, I'm sorry, I have to talk about it. It's amazing to see the changes that have been going on through this time. And I also use quite a lot of true vintage pieces actually, which obviously, I mean, couldn't it be any better? <laughs> also the whole scenery and cinematography, Downton Abbey, it is a dream estate. There are six seasons and there also is a film which came out last year. So there is a lot to watch and yeah, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. Peaky Blinders. So this is a show that I'm actually currently watching, so I haven't seen all of it. This one is set in the late 1910s, 1920s, very short of the First World War, and it plays around the family Shelby, who actually is a criminal gang called Peaky Blinders. And as far as I've read, the family itself is fictional, but they are kind of based on an urban youth gang that lived during that time and who actually was called Peaky Blinders as well. So it is a little bit inspired by real life, but all in all it is fictional. The leader of this gang is Thomas Shelby, who is played by Celia Murphy. And I'm sorry to say this now, but can we please take a moment to appreciate his blue eyes like... He's the main character that leads us through the show and he's a very ambitious man and very cunning basically a Slytherin. <laughs> he constantly wants more and more and he wants to be very successful, no matter if it is illegal or legal. I mean, that's how a criminal gang works, right? And the Peaky Blinders then come to attention of the Chief Inspector Campbell. The Detective Chief Inspector Campbell. Because a cage of arms was stolen and Campbell tries to find out where they are and he believes that the Peaky Blinders are behind that. At first sight a lot of people think that it is more of a kind of male show but I personally really enjoy it even though I'm a like very female female. 
The interesting thing is it plays in the same time as Downton Abbey, but it is completely different. So it shows the complete opposite of that time. It has more of a darker mood and aesthetic. Currently there are five seasons and you can watch it on Netflix. Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. I love that show. <laughs> This show is set in the 1920s in Australia, which is very refreshing, again, because it is a completely new location. As the title already says, it is about Miss Fisher, who is solving murder mysteries in Australia in the Roaring Twenties. And she's basically a private detective who somehow worked with the police. You know, they have this kind of relationship where they can't live with each other, but they also can't live without each other. You know what I mean? It's a crime show, but it is not like completely dark and bloody. It also has some lovely moments and the aesthetic is amazing, especially if you love the 1920s. This is a must, but to talk about the main character because she is amazing. I mean, can we look at her? Can I be her, please? Definitely one of the greatest fictional characters out there. She is independent, strong. She is absolutely smart and beautiful. She has basically the best style. She's basically a badass, if I can say so. And it is a joy to follow her and solve the crimes. There are three seasons in total. You can watch it on Amazon Prime as well as on Netflix. And by the way, there actually is a film coming out this year. I don't know when it will be available here in Germany. I really hope that I will be able to watch it somehow because there actually is a character who is called Shireen, like me, which like basically never happens. And that's just amazing. Agatha Christie's Perot or Poirot. How do you actually pronounce this name? <laughs> so this show is based on Agatha Christie's novels with Hercule Poirot as the main character. And if you are an Agatha Christie fan, just like me, and you haven't seen this show, then go for it and watch it. <laughs> And for all of those who don't know who he is, he is from Belgium, he is a private detective. He worked at the police in Belgium and then retired at the beginning of the 20th century. And after the First World War, he goes to England as kind of a refugee. And that's where the show starts. The first novel that Miss Christie wrote is called The Mysterious Affairs at Styles. And that's the first episode. Basically goes through every novel and every short story that she has written with him as the main character. And there are actually 70 episodes in total. So if you're looking for a very long TV show, then you're right. <laughs> this show is set in mainly the 1930s. Obviously all of the novels are not only set in the 1930s, but they decided to keep it in this 1930s aesthetic. The role of Perrault is played by David Suchet, and I think he is the perfect Perrault because he actually looks like how I always imagined him. Just everything, the way he looks, the way he walks, the way he talks, and all of these little characteristics about him. It's just perfectly portrayed, and also the rest of the cast. You can watch it on Amazon Prime, but you probably have to pay for that. At least I have to pay for that here in Germany. So I couldn't find it for free, but believe me, it is worth it. The Crown. <laughs> this show starts in the 1940s and then, you know, goes through all of the following decades. For all of you who don't know it already, this show is about Queen Elizabeth II and her family and basically her life and, you know, everything that happened within the past few decades. And in the first two seasons, Queen Elizabeth gets portrayed by Claire Foy, who really does a great job in showing us the young queen. Prince Philip, played by Matt Smith. Princess Margaret by Vanessa Kirby. The first two seasons basically focus on her coronation, her wedding with Prince Philip, her relationship with Churchill, and also the relationships of Princess Margaret. In the third season, which is the latest one actually, 
the queen gets portrayed by someone else because after the second season they decided to change the cast because obviously they get a little bit older played by Olivia Colman who again also does an amazing job. Other actors in this season are for example Helena Bonham Carter who plays Princess Margaret. We also get to see a little bit about her and her traveling through the US. Prince Charles and Princess Anne also play a bigger role in this season. All in all for all of the seasons the casts are great and I must say the fashion again is amazing as well obviously since it goes through different decades you get to see all of the changes and different things same goes for the set you definitely feel like you are in the Buckingham Palace or in all of their other palaces and estates whatever they are called <laughs> it really makes you feel like you're watching them and you get an insight into their lives it's a great entertainment and also very educating because you get to know more about the events during this time, especially for someone who's not from Great Britain. At the moment, there are three seasons on Netflix. The fourth one is currently in the making, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> now we're finally coming to the 1950s, because this show is set in the 1950s in New York. It is, in my opinion, one of the greatest comedy shows at the moment. And this show is about Miriam Mitch Maisel, who was a normal housewife with a husband, two kids living at the Upper West Side, and from one day to another her husband leaves her and that basically changes her life completely. She kind of tries to find a new way and she wants to become a comedian which is very unusual for women in the 1950s. So you may can guess that this is a very interesting show to watch. So she tries to become a comedian and then she becomes friends with Susie who works at the Gaslight, which is a club in New York. And they're both just an amazing team. I love watching them together. Susie is just absolutely hilarious as well. The costumes, guys. Can I please have all of them. Thank you. This is pure 1950s perfection. Amazing. They did an amazing job. Music as well. I love the music that they play in the background for everyone who needs some 1950s music. It's always fun to, you know, hear some Frank Sinatra, Doris Day in the background. It always makes me geek out a lot. It's also full of little insider things. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is definitely absolutely marvelous. Um, currently there are three seasons, but as far as I know, there are more to come and you can watch them on Amazon Prime. And last but not least, Mad Men. This show is set in the 1960s and then ends around 1970s in New York, in Manhattan, and it is about an advertisement agency. And in the first episode, they actually say that the term madman was used as a slang of 1950s advertisers who work on the Madison Avenue. But I've read that this was actually not the case, but it is a great name for a show and it definitely stays in your head, I think. <laughs> so the show is basically about the advertisement agency Sterling Cooper and you get to see how the work is going on there, what the men do, what the women do, what their relationship is, how they interact. You also get to see the private lives of them, so not only professional. The main character is called Don Draper. He's a very talented man in his field and he's very successful in this advertisement agency and he is a womanizer as well. Since the show goes through this one decade, the 60s, you can really see the changes that were happening during this time, you know, all the different moods and the fashion, obviously, and also all of the social aspects. So things like drinking, sexism, feminism, racism, homophobia, smoking cigarettes as well, because at that time they finally slowly found out that smoking isn't good for your health and obviously loads of other stuff and you kind of get to see how the people handled all of this. Mad Men is available on Netflix. There are 92 episodes, seven seasons, a lot to watch as you can see. But yeah, 
These were the 10 TV shows that I wanted to talk about, that I wanted to share with you. Definitely feel free to comment down below the shows that you would like to recommend that I didn't talk about. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got loads of inspiration for the next TV marathon. Let me know if I should do something similar again or a part two, maybe something with period dramas like Jane Austen, all that stuff. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I wish you a wonderful rest of the day and I will hopefully see you in one of my next videos. Bye!